Okay, I got my replacement parts in for my docks. They're a bit pricey, but they're a complete set rather than just the metal pieces, which were out of stock. Uh, I need to find my tool. <clears throat> So what I'm going to be doing is replacing both docks on this. Luckily I designed my uh, bench here that I can just spin this around. Just need to move some crap out of the way. And I've got filament loaded so I need to go ahead and unload the filament. Let's gonna go ahead and unload that filament. So that might take a second. Uh, these are the replacement pieces. Uh, on my original ones, I had filed these down, both sides of that, because they weren't fitting. And I wound up filing that down just a wee bit too much. And it caused all sorts of issues with docking. So I'm going to have to pull those apart, put the pieces on here, dock, put these into the extrusion, and uh, then recalibrate everything. So right now I'm unloading the filament. What's currently in there is Overture Glow in the Dark PLA. Print's really nice. I also purchased some Duramic 3D filament that, as far as I'm concerned, is not good. So I'm not going to be using that. Uh, but the Overture, I really like the Overture. My, I really like Elegoo. Esun Hatchbox. Uh, I primarily do everything in Hatchbox and Esun, uh, and I've been doing a lot more in Elegoo and in Polylite. I really like the Polylite for ABS. There we go. Come on, spit it out. And of course the 300 feet of filament. And I do have, I did upgrade to the obsidian novels, nozzles, nozzles, nozzles. Uh, that's why I'm able to print in the uh, glow in the dark. Because glow in the dark is abrasive and it will destroy brass nozzles. <clears throat> okay. So now filament has been removed. Go back, go to preheat, and cool down because I'd rather not touch a hot. So we're going to let it sit here so I can see that it's cooler. Oh, I also was printing in a, a wood filament, a little benchy and wood filament. Turned out pretty good. A little, you know, there's a little bit of drooping on the front. Uh, I bur did a burn test on it, uh, and it was sticky, but then after a while it, uh, it wasn't sticky anymore, I guess you could say, and uh, <clears throat> take a look at it, and burn it just like a regular PLA for me. Uh, you just use the stock PLA settings. I could probably get rid of that problem by tweaking the settings. I mean, the hole's pretty good. Supposedly you can supposedly you can sand this and paint it and everything else just like real wood. Uh, when I did burn it, it smelled. It did smell like burning wood, but it also smelled a little bit like plastic. All right.
Okay, so we're down to 138C. I want it to get below 100 before I dock it. Which shouldn't take too long. It's, it's a cooler time of year. It's like watching paint dry, right? We'll see how long it takes. This is the part where you fast forward. I will need that tool. And I need that. Comes with the printer. I'm going to need uh, is it that one? Yes, it's gonna need this this one. That's for, well, no, I'm not going to need that one, actually. That's the wrong one, because I'm not changing, I'm not changing the nozzle that I'm aware of. This one here, I'm changing the dock. So, this is the other one that's used for attaching the dock to the extrusion. So, I'll need those two. Uh, what else do I need? That's pretty much it, I think. And I think I'm going to leave that. I was going to dock that, but I think I want to leave that right where it's at. It should be, that'll be, keep it out of the way, because I only... I only need to change the dock, docking mechanism itself. I'll probably pull the other one off, so if that's the case, then I don't need to wait anymore. I'm not, should I, eh, you know what, I'm going to dock it anyway. Because I'm going to put it on, park the current tool. Pull them, pull them off the dock anyway, but... Okay, disable that. And then I want to go ahead and disable the motors. So that I can pull this out of the way. Go ahead and shut it off. Because I don't need that on. Luckily, I built my bench with enough room to be able to spin this thing on. Go ahead and disconnect the power. That's not a good sound. Okay. Yeah, that's out of the way. So, empty box. Set that on the bed. to undock. I'm going to lay that down on there. And then we'll undock this one. And we're going to lay that one on there too. Okay, so now there are six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know if you can see them all, but close enough. I need to take those out. This is just to make life easier. Well, I don't know if you could actually get rid of those docks with uh, this cover still on. Never done this before. Haven't looked at the manual. So we'll see if that's a mistake. But I think we'll be fine. I've taken this part apart enough times to <laughs> have a pretty good idea of what's going on now. Uh, 
There may be some profanity coming up. Luckily, they're all the same exact size. So, not have to worry about mixing them up. Just don't lose them. Oh, well. Okay. I might need a pair of needle nose pliers as well. All right, so this comes right off. Then there's a ground wire here. Take that off and set that aside. Won't be needing that. Okay. So we need to transfer this piece here to this here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to do a quick test fit. That feels like it fits way better than the previous version I, than these versions I had, so I'm happy about that. All right. Now the fun part. Uh, should I do this one first or this one first? I really wish they would have given me a little more clearance between here, the belts and that. That just makes me nervous. Yeah, but uh, we've decided to go with this one. So it looks like I might need more, a couple more tools here. Okay. As long as that doesn't, I used a little bit of, I don't know if you can see it on there. Does it show up? Yeah. I used a little bit of copper tape to kind of temporarily fix this. So. Uh, sort of worked all right so yeah I'm gonna need my snippers okay so this is this part here so the question is can I leave that I want to try to leave that so there is a hole so I think I need to take this off to because that might be in the way let's find out No. Well, that ain't gonna work that way. Right. I think I can just take these two bolts out, but it's not with that tool. And that's too short. Let's see if it's the other one. That seems like it's too big, but we'll see. And then the... oh, that might be it. I don't know if I have to re remove that in order to get to that top one. with Bruce's design. Hmm. 
think that other one's going to be too big. I feel some sort of resistance in there. Might be the is it the PTFE tube? Well, the tube does go through that way. Let's get a flashlight. PTF, I think the PTF tube goes next to it, and not. All right. All right, so that bottom one is definitely out. Maybe it's the copper tape that's holding it in place. And that middle screw is still there. tell so let's make sure that middle screw comes completely out and not sure I'm digging their design For the bottom one. No, oh, wrong one. Duh. Always hopes you can get the right one. The bottom one looks like it's out. It's the top one that's giving me grief. All right, so that's this far one going in. Yeah, that should be. That's past that. Doesn't look like it's moving that screw at all, though. Don't make me go read the manual. Well, this part wasn't in the manual when I first got this. So. Is there something else holding this in? Center, but that one seems. I don't think that one's trapped. Because I don't think this one has one in the center. Nope. So it should not be trapped. Uh, something pointy that I can probably poke my finger with. Hopefully not. For the middle one first, it should be the easiest. Comes all the way through. And... And it does not want to come out. I do believe the instructions do have how to assemble and disassemble this now, so I may have to go back and look at that because the parts are now available to purchase, obviously, because I purchased them. Is there a 
definitely does not want to cooperate, does it? I could be just sitting in the whole spinning. I heard one. Yeah, there's that one's going back and forth. this and we're gonna go look at the destructions we'll be right back okay I'm back nothing in the manual spoke to the Prusa support for a little bit and it should just be the th the three two screws holding this in then you got the extra screw to mount it to that And so this one is just being a pain in the ass. That's all. They said it's just a standard M3. But I don't know if this is... Let's see. I don't think that's going to be long enough. That sh well, that wouldn't work anyway because they said it should be a Torx. And this is an M3. This one. So we just have to keep fighting it, I guess. It feels like there's something blocking it, but I can't be 100% sure because that is past that for sure. The bottom one came out this far. Uh, you know that saying, nothing can ever be easier, right? Well, I hate to have to reprint this. That would be annoying. Alright, can I screw it back in? screw it back in. I'm hoping it's not stripped, but I have a couple other of those. Let me just to make sure I'm not being dense here. doubt it's these but hey whatever works works if it works it works yep definitely not that and this one is going to be probably too big Another idea requires a sledgehammer. <laughs> no, we're not going to use a sledgehammer. Looks like it's moving a little bit. It's not flush. I'm wondering if I'm gonna have to get a new screw for that. Let's 
I'm going to go look at the 3D model for that. Okay, I took this one, uh, unmounted this one, and was loosening these screws, and these seem to be coming off pretty easily. So, I'm wondering if that screw is stripped out at the top, which would suck. Because that means I have to print a whole new body, which makes that a lot more complicated. Because this mount is wiggling. And it kind of sucks that you have to use two different tools on this. But it, it is what it is. Alright, that's out. That's that top one again that's causing all sorts of issues. But this one I can feel moving. This one is definitely coming out. The other one is going to be problematic. Par for the course, right? Let's make sure the bottom one is done. Oh, there we go. There we go. Of course I dropped it. There it is. Luckily it's right nearby. Okay, so there's that one. That is the middle one. Taking that crap off. So then it has to go. Should only go on one way. I don't know if you can see that. It's got the two screws that hold this. And then of course the one screw to hold it against the frame. So it can only go one way because this outer part has to go out. That's the part that's got to go to the frame. And then once you screw it in, it should just tighten down to the... Do a little bit on one, do a little bit on the other. So I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. Assuming this one's not stripped out too. Hmm. I'm using the right tool, yes, yep. Okay. Take this one down some more. Oop. Don't lose that. good and tight. That looks like it's flush to me. So now the fun part. Let me get that one out of the way. Put that down. This is where I ran into trouble originally installing this thing. has to sit flush up against this extrusion and it is not and I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice. Ooh, did that? Oh 
that does move. Great. Well, I was going to recalibrate anyway. Uh, well, that's an interesting question then, because I plan on upgrading this to the 5 tool. Hmm. You would think they would have made this long enough that it would stick in one side or the other, which I think it does actually. I think there's a little stopper over there. Yep. Yep, there's a stopper. Okay, they did do it. Good, good, good. Now this is the part that is pain in the ass. Put that in there. Nope. Is that not it? Come back here. That's got to be it. But that doesn't fit. So that, is, that has to be the screw. Has to be. nothing else in there <laughs> this just came out of it. it has to go in what the hell what am I missing did this go Oh, <laughs> okay, my mistake. My mistake, I better know how this goes. I bet that screw has to go in on this side. And then it's trapped inside of here. Strange design choice, but hey, if it works, it works. You're figuring this out at the same time I am. Since there's no manual, and I have noticed online that people have kind of done it a different way. Yep, that goes in there like that. It's got to go that way. So they put this in first. I'm going to try to We're going to try it this way. This one I can probably use. It's probably the bigger size. Yeah, it's going to be the bigger size on that. Don't move. Let's see. I'm guessing it's this one. I was wrong. One down. So for those playing at home, it's two and a half.
question is, is it flush? It actually does feel flush. I don't know why they didn't... Oh, nope, that ain't flush. Yeah, there we go. That. Nope. See, we're still rocking back and forth. This is the problem I had before. It's slightly bowed out at the bottom. Okay. Talk about rocking it back and forth, yada yada. This shouldn't be this challenging, but it is. Alright, I know the light is causing me problem is, is this piece here, these edges here are slightly, ever so slightly larger than this. And the problem I had is I filed those down too much, so then they were too loose. And it shouldn't go back and forth like that at all. Let's set that aside for a second. sure that slid all the way over. I can freaking manhandle this thing apparently. feels that feels like it's flush and I can see that it is not 100% flush I mean it feels See, as soon as I pulled back on that, I should not be able to do that. Yep, it's too much play in it. Way too much. Take a look here. I don't want to strip this thing out either. <laughs> that would suck. I'd have to drill that out. Just gonna have to 
tried to kind of, you know, try doing it a couple times. And, there you go. Feels looks like it's fairly even at this point. Now I can't really rock it back and forth, so I think we're good on that. Just make sure that's getting tight on there. These things need to be 100% solid for reliable operation. Okay. So I like that method of doing it because it's a lot easier to see what you're doing. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can get some light on this to uh, the other. The other one's in the way a little bit, but so we can kind of put that out of the way. See if we can zoom in. See if we can get in a little zoom in on that a little bit. Is a super tight fit and I'm not sure that the top is 100% in there but you know, I'm trying to wiggle this thing back and forth oh, oh see now it's moving again uh, maybe if I wiggle it and tighten it down more That does feel pretty sturdy. That actually looks like it might be seated. Yeah, what a pain in the ass. Come on, Prusy, you gotta fix this docking mounting. It's ridiculous. All right, well. Time if I can get okay. So the center one I don't care about. It's only the top, the top one here that's causing me grief. It's this tool for sure. Let's make sure the bottom one is out as much as it can be. I think the bottom one is all the way out. I just need this to get rid of the grip. Put some pressure on that side. Yeah, I think we're stripped, which is going to suck. to drill this sucker out. It feels as if it is stripped or something. Yeah, that one is in there good and freaking tight. Uh, that would suck. I'd have to print another one of these. <laughs> All right, I'm 
want to fight this off camera for a while and uh, we'll go from there. Actually, all right, well, that one, how the hell did they trap that one in there? It's got to go in through the top up here, I bet. Ooh. Okay. Well, since I'm uh, counting this as a loss. Ding, 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 ding. If it goes in through the top. I take the top. Take this part off. I gotta take this one off. This part off anyway. I'm sure the, this is gonna cause me some grief as well. designs oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, all right Ooh, that's spring loaded on that one So do not lose that spring. All right. Can we see inside there? Oh, we can. Oh, I see. Well, live and learn. Don't drill it out. shoved over into the plastic this way and that is why maybe I don't know maybe it is completely stripped finally come off. Oh. Piece of crap. Managed to save the plastic piece, yay. I think. All right, so make sure that is not stripped. I think that's still good. All right. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so, still working on this part. Uh, if you look online, there's a lot of people talk about how to install these things, and what they have to do is they, they're saying that they have to wiggle them and stuff like that. So, basically what they're talking about, and I'm going to loosen this up a little bit here, is they'll wiggle it this direction. You shouldn't have any wiggle left or right. And that was the problem I was having with my docks, is that they would tip to this direction, uh, which would cause the docking to fail because it was looking for something that's square, and now it's off by a couple degrees. So what I found when installing this one is I would have to tighten it down as best I could. And then I wiggle it like that, and we're like, okay, tighten it down some more, and it still wiggles, and then tighten it down a little more, and now I'm good and solid. Sometimes I'd have to tighten it down, 
when I first started doing it, I have to tighten it down and loosen it up, wiggle it some more, tighten it down. You're basically, it's probably one of the, I bet these are powder coated and I bet there's a little bit of powder coat. I've run into this with re, uh, restoring my arcade games is the powder coat adds just a little extra thickness that wasn't originally planned for. So it makes it a lot tighter fit. And you basically have to get rid of some of that powder coating in order for it to fit flush. It could be that they, when they, the other thing is they may be cutting these down and it's not, they're not cutting it down quite enough because they don't want to cut it down too much. If they cut it down too much, then it's going to rock back and forth because they chose to go with the single screw instead of having, say, two screws that go into the side here, you know, to hold this in place. So maybe a fix would be to, well, you'd have to redesign this part. You'd have to redesign multiple parts in this in order to probably fix this the right way. Okay, so that one is solid that one is solid uh, now there's two screws that go into this when you get this assembled it's already got the little thing here the, uh, already attached to it which I think is kind of a disservice to because then you don't really understand this until you have to t tear it all apart but a screw goes in through this hole here I don't know if it's showing up on camera. And then there's a then there's another hole up top that the screw goes into up here, which we will put this one in. And get the tool to tighten that down. And I was able to get that screw out without drilling it out. The drilling out wasn't working. Um, so there. So now that goes through. The problem was that the screw was kind of off a little bit. So it was like hitting the plastic. So there was no nowhere for it to unscrew to. So taking off that one piece, I could see down in there and then I could maneuver the tool and maneuver the screw a little bit you know kind of flex this a little bit one way or the other one unscrewing it and then it came out just fine so live and learn again no instructions online currently so you know you, you gotta figure this stuff out and hopefully you get it right okay so now we're gonna look at this one to compare how it goes. So there's a little metal, little metal piece here. Hopefully this shows up on camera. Well, you can see that there's a little bit of a bend to it, and that's getting so it's the nozzle will come in this direction and sit on top of the little thing. And then there's two holes in this. Probably not see yeah, it's not on camera that I'm messing with this. Let's move that down so we can actually see what the heck I'm doing here. This part is actually I believe this part is actually on. So it's gonna go gonna go that way so I think I did this wrong yeah I know I did this wrong. because I'm missing something We're gonna go look at the directions for this because 
That's true. I want to get this correct so I don't have to do it twice. Be right back. Okay, we're back. All right, so look, went and looked at the instructions. Didn't really help at all. Uh, so I looked at this one and I figured it out. So uh, there are two versions of this particular part here. This is the for the docking. It's the ooze prevention. Allows the nozzle to get, when it comes in, it wipes off of here. There's two holes in here, but the only hole that's really used is the one in the back. Um, so, and it's kind of deceptive because it looks like it folds like this, but it's actually stretched. It's, you know, it looks, looks like it's folded like this, but it's actually stretched out. So what we do is it's going to go like this, down like that. So we're going to put, so what we do is we start with, uh, the top one actually, right? So put it and line the holes up like that. And then we're going to put this through. Or we'll just drop it on the, on the floor. Uh, if you're curious as to, to which side's which on this. Okay, stop moving around. There, if we look at this, there is like a, a honeycomb kind of, and then a flat. So we want... The screw to go. This is this is the top, and this is the bottom. This little notch here is going to go into sits into this like this. So it's going to screw into here, and the tab will stick out this way. Okay, so let's grab the screw again. Put that back in. Try this again, and we want the bend in the middle to go down so we're gonna start like this right and if I remember correctly we go could have this backwards but we'll see so in like that that goes the notch goes towards the back of that and then we gotta stretch this all the way around hopefully on camera here so that the hole goes over the screw like that. That's a little, little stretchy for my taste on that. So we need to take, stretch it out more like that. And then it should look a lot like that. Put that on there. And we'll screw that together. So in the future, oop, there we go. Has to be square. And this is upside down from the left from what it was originally installed because they can see the plastic and stuff on there. So finger type that. And now that that piece uh, is assembled. So the next time I want to remove it, I'm going to leave that screw, that screw intact, and then the, I'll remove it with this one. That way I don't have to repeat this process, but if I have to replace this piece, then at some point I'm going to, they did give spares of the rubber was a silicone, whatever it's made out of, I don't know. It feels rubbery, but it's probably not rubber, because rubber would probably melt. Uh, and then the, the spring goes on like that. 
and then it goes in like that and we'll tighten it down now uh, we're gonna want to probably tighten it all the way to the bottom because when the nozzle comes in it's gonna come in we want it to we don't want it to collide with the edge here we want it to hit the top here so that it hits the little ramp and sits right here so I'm gonna tighten it all the way down for now and then I will dock it and then I can raise that up if I if I need the knot because we want the nozzle to be touching this so that it'll seal off that nozzle Uh, and if this is too high it'll hit if it's too low it's not gonna seal it so we're just gonna we'll just have to sit there and screw with it once it's docked little pieces of plastic everywhere <laughs> okay so now and we have our two screws in here and let's go ahead and what do we want to attach first? Uh, we want to make sure that that's over there. Uh, so we can probably do this one first. Okay. Now the fun part, right? getting that to line up with that. Mm, why? Do we need to put that on afterwards? Is that causing me no, causing me some grief? Well, let's find out. I think that's causing me some grief. I think I need to take this off. Looks like. Which now I know that it's easy to just take that one piece off. Set that aside. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. Okay, yep. Yes, yes, yes. Much better, okay. Again, I wish this hadn't come fully assembled. This piece. then it would have been a lot easier for me to figure this out if I had to assemble it. Yeah, see, this is the problem I ran into before and why it wasn't on. There we go. Look inside, screw it down. And I bet my camera angle is off. It is. Screwing in the top one a little bit, not all the way. Screw in the bottom one. not cooperating again not my favorite design okay Some clearance there. Okay. Uh, that 
that's good and tight. Do I have a little piece of paper? Just to make sure that I've got the clearance I need. Okay, so I don't now I need to put this back on. like it's all the way down all right now I'll put this one back on which I may have to do the same thing because that one will that one to, the top one won't go back because of that so we're gonna have to recalibrate those things so Part of owning a 3D printer is knowing how to do all this. Ooh, do not lose the spring. That would suck. I don't know if I have spare springs. <laughs> so now that that's there, this will push in so that we can attach it this way. Hopefully I'm making enough mistakes that you won't have to. Yeah, there, I gotta wiggle it around a little bit to get to. At least they made it so that it lines up. top one down but not all the way assuming that it gets there am I not in the screen there we go now the bottom one had they made the screws external so it was like on both sides probably would have been a lot easier And a lot more stable. Gotta wiggle that around. To, there we go. So it's, it's tight. Make sure that's good. Tight. Yeah, because these things, the tool changes are pretty violent. So these things need to be tight so they don't come loose. Uh, well, should have taken the antenna off, but Should have moved the antenna before I put uh, put those back on, but I'm not taking those off because it should be easier to, <laughs> in theory, to take this off, right? In theory, but I think it's because we're at a freaking angle. Still not going to be what I want. There we go. There. 
We'll put that on in a minute. Put that back on in a minute. I'm not even sure I need it. But it probably helps. Okay. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Check that again. Make sure that. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing touching. So you can run that back and forth just fine. If these aren't perfectly square then it tends to touch these two uh, and it could wear them out break them whatever so be very careful with that all right so now uh, let's take this one Dock it uh, down lower, Mister. What am I doing wrong here? Other than oh, I'm gonna be annoyed if something's not right here. What did I do wrong? Hmm? Okay, so actually that looks pretty good. All the way down seems like it's pretty good. So let's make sure this one's all the way down too. Uh, So that looks actually pretty decent. Uh, okay. I mean, that's as far down as it's gonna go. So I don't. I guess we'll find out shortly. Uh, I just need to do the dock the other one. And then we'll take a look at that. See that now that one. I wonder if it's because of metals. See now that one. I think I need to, to raise up a little bit. It's interesting. You can see that there's a little. Hopefully, you can see that there's a little more of a gap on this one than there is on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna un we're gonna manually undock this one so I can get to the adjustment on that one. So let me do that. so we can see this better. Right there. It's 
probably not easy to see that there's a gap. If I put some light on it, if it'll make it easier. Does that help? Maybe. But it's not touching. So if it's not touching, it's not going to prevent the ooze. So you raise that up. Don't want it too high, don't want it too low. Again, I don't see anything in the manual about that. Those are strong magnets. <laughs> All right, I got to move the camera out of the way here so I can see a little bit better. I think we're going to try that. It's kind of hard to tell, but... We're going to call that good for now. Alright, let's dock, redock the other thing. from this angle but there we go dot dot let's go ahead and put the antenna back on It's fine. Alright. Everything's still connected, looks like. Put my ground back on, which is an important part. Rounds are for safety. All right. And this, the top part slides underneath the top up here. I don't know if we can get a, you can see how it slides underneath that, like that. So it doesn't matter which screws you take out in what order because it's that part of the design I do like because that makes it nice and easy and trying to do everything with this on is a pain in the butt so get out our screwdriver again here and reassemble now I'm gonna have to recalibrate the docks because there's a possibility that they've slightly moved and the calibration doesn't take long, and it's a good thing to do. Anytime you mess with the docks, if you're changing their position whatsoever, it's probably a good idea to recalibrate that. It's quick, and it makes sure that everything is where it should be.
This is turning into a longer video than I expected, but so be it. If you've watched my channel long enough, you know that I'm no stranger to, sh to long videos. And with YouTube, you can fast forward through the boring parts, like screwing something down. Okay. Let's get all my stuff out of the way. I'm gonna spin it back around, plug it in. And we'll go from there. We got flashing lights, my little filament catcher fell, actually chunks of filament, hey it's doing its job. We may have to adjust these too, but I shouldn't have to. Ugh, all right. Well, I'll probably need that again for calibration docking, so. All right, so we're gonna go into the control menu. We'll go calibration of test at the very bottom. Dock position calibration. Okay. So I'm gonna need a flat bladed screwdriver. I had one. Uh, where did I put it over there? Yeah, this should work. Okay. Because uh, I need to remove the docking pins and I'm going to need my wrench to loosen that up. So I got my wrench. I'll probably just get over. Dock one calibration. Mm, that is noisy. Squeal. Okay. So it wants me to do, do, do. dock pins. That's what this flat blade screwdriver is for. Move those. Now I have spares. All right, we're gonna move this screwdriver then. Stop. I've done this calibration a billion times. Plus or minus a billion. Okay. Two docking pins have been removed. Now it's going to want me to loosen the these two. Okay. Then I'll have to 
be a super loose. Just loose enough, I'm guessing. Uh, yep, this was perfect. Okay. Now it's going to want me to duck and walk. Snap and snap. Okay. Once I'm done with that, it's going to want me to tighten the top dock. See how loose it too much, apparently. Okay, just a little. Just a little finger tight, not a whole bunch, and then uh, pull that off, and it should pull that away. And then once it's up front, then it's going to want me to do the bottom one. Okay, and tighten that one back up. Continue and that's right, install, reinstall the docking pins. Okay, so we get a flat blade screwdriver. Tighten it down a little bit. And now it should duck. Testing the docking position. And those look way more solid than the previous ones, so I'm happy about that. Alright, so that should be done with that one. And now we're going to go to back to dock two. Yeah, yeah, online guide. So we're going to remove the two pins again. I mean, this isn't complicated at all, which is nice. Oops, if you get it in the right spot there. Okay. Okay. Don't need the box. For some reason, I was thinking I did, but I don't. Okay. Then the next step. It's really nice that it's all on the screen here with pictures and everything, which I'll give kudos to Prusa for that. All right, so I want to loosen these two. The only thing they don't mention is how much they should be loosened, which I, as long as you're not pulling them out, I think you're fine. All right, so those are loosened. Now we want to manually dock. Both of those are all the way over. Slide that over, slide that over so it's locked in place. Now it wants me to tighten the top one again. Okay. 
You don't want to crank on it. Okay, then continue. That's gonna pull that away. Then as soon as it's done moving, then we'll do the other one. You're done. Thank you. pins that. tighten them down just enough so that they shouldn't come loose darn normal Okay, continue, and now it should go and hopefully find Okay, dock successfully calibrated. Quit. Return. Return. Now we're going to pick tool. We're going to pick tool number one. And now we're going to pick tool number two. Yeah, I'm liking the way that's performing already. Those look much more solid than before. Nice. Park the current one. Pick tool one. Yeah, those docks are not moving at all. All right. I think that does it. See, it's a quick and easy, <laughs> okay, maybe not quick, maybe not easy. It's, it's not super challenging, though. But, you know, the instructions leave a little bit to be desired. The tolerances are pretty damn tight. So you can't just stick it in there, screw it down, and you're done. Now you got to sit there and finesse it. And uh, don't do what I did, which was file it down. That was a big, big mistake. Uh, had I just had a little more patience and uh, sat there and just messed with it until I got it right, then I wouldn't have been in the situation. Those docks are not cheap, so. But uh, I can't afford to have. It's cheaper than having failed prints, which I've had several failed prints because they wouldn't dock or undock correctly. So now I'm going to do some multi-tool print tests, and we'll see how those turn out. Uh, and hopefully I don't have to make any more videos about changing that stuff. But if you're having docking issues like I did, hopefully this will help you. If you're assembling it for the first time, hopefully this will help you as well. Uh,